What the ITTF test for? Hi, the ITTF measure colour according to the CIE lab system, which importantly for reasons we'll show later, is device independent, and they compare the results to the Munsell colour standards given for white and orange. The measurements are taken against the seam and two other points on the ball, and four balls are used, all selected from different boxes, and the average used over the four balls. A black velvet hemisphere provides the backdrop, which gives a neutral background. And the device taking the measurement is a spectral photometer, which measures the reflection or transmission properties of the material. How our tests were done? A spectral photometer is simply too expensive for me to buy, and I'm not even going to try and pretend to understand colour measurement, Munsell and all those other types of things. However, using my editing software's Vetroscope and YC Waveform Monitor, and applying four point garbage map video effects, I can in simple terms isolate the brightest part of a ball and measure its colour saturation or put bluntly show which ball is brighter and whiter. Our results. Here's footage of both types of balls side by side. Which do you think is the brighter? By switching to the YC waveform view in the reference monitor on the right of the screen you can now see the brightness values shown for the image in the program monitor on the left. And by turning on a garbage mat effect I'd already set, you can see that the x-axis in the YC waveform view shows me where there is darkness and brightness in the image. The y-axis shows me how dark or light the image is. The higher up the y-axis, the brighter the image, the lower down, the darker. In this image of Julius plastic and celluloid balls, you can see here is the brightest part of the image, and that's on the celluloid ball. The brightest part of the plastic ball is here, but the plastic ball's readings are not as bright as the celluloid ball. If I switch to the vetroscope, which basically shows me how strong the colours are in the image, you can see there's a predominance of blues, which is caused by the blue in Jeweller's name. Blacks and whites, shown by a mask close to the centre of the vetroscope, and to a lesser degree the sun saturation of red shown here, which is caused by the red colouring for the word Super P on the plastic ball. But I'm not interested in the reds and blues. I want to know about the whites, and that means I'll have to isolate the brightest part of each ball. By switching back to the YC waveform monitor, I'm going to isolate the brightest part of the plastic ball. Using the garbage mat effect, I'm going to get rid of the blacks in the image and leave just a white part of Judas plastic ball. But not just any white part, I want the brightest part here. If Judas plastic ball is true white, there should be a small mass in the centre of the vetroscope view. So, now we've selected the brightest part of Judas plastic ball, let's switch over to the vetroscope view. And yes, that mass is pretty central but there's just a little dispersion. So the vetroscope is telling me the brightest part of the plastic ball is not true pure white, but it is still pretty good. Now let's repeat this again for the celluloid ball. First we'll switch back to the YC waveform view to find the brightest part of the celluloid ball. Sorry about that, that was just the autosave function at work on my software. And I'll reset the garbage mat to show the whole image. Now I'll adjust the garbage mat and by referencing with the YC waveform monitor you can see that the brightest part of the celluloid ball is not surprisingly a white part. Now let's switch back to the vetroscope to see how central the results are. And yes, there's a tiny bit of dispersion but it's more central and that shows me that in our tests the Jeweler celluloid ball is whiter than the Jeweler plastic ball. But table tennis isn't played under bright photography lights. We play in all types of conditions. So let's try this again. This time I'm going to use my bedroom carpet and the lighting, well that's an 8 watt energy bulb. Let's see where the brightest part of the image is. And you can see it's on the right hand side over the celluloid ball. So the celluloid ball is, once again, brighter or whiter than the plastic one. But what about when the light source is behind the ball? Which is the brighter then? 
Here I've overlaid the photos I took of the seam on the plastic and celluloid balls. The light source is behind these balls, which means the camera is looking at the darkest side of the ball. Now I'm going to activate a garbage mat effect I've already set, which displays a selection of the back part of each ball, the part furthest away from the light source. Remember the images are layered on top of each other. The celluloid ball is on top. That's the main image and the plastic ball, well that's behind it. Now let's apply the YC waveform view to see how bright the image is. And you can see there are two distinct peak levels, one brighter than the other. But which ball is which? By switching between the views for each ball, you can see that this time it's the plastic ball which is brighter than the celluloid one. How can this be? How can the position of the ball in relation to the light source cause such different results? I think it goes back to what we talked about in our video, seam, surface of the ball, hardness. This jeweler plastic ball is more translucent than the celluloid ball. So whilst the light bounces back off the celluloid ball, leaving the far side in darkness, it penetrates through the surface of the plastic ball and lights up the far side, the side furthest away from the light source. Whatever the reason, it suggests which ball seems brightest to you will depend on the quality of the lighting and the position of the ball in relation to you and the light source. And now we've introduced movement, something which I don't think technical leaflet T3 takes into account when measuring colour. Now I can't roll two balls together on the carpet because that's not going to be fair. One of the balls is going to be closer to the camera and one of the balls is going to be closer to the light source. So that's going to impact on the results. So I've had to film them one at a time. But to make things easier for comparison purposes, I've synced the videos and layered them on top of each other in my editing timeline. Jeweler's celluloid ball is on top and the plastic one on the bottom. I've also slowed the footage down to 25% of its normal speed to keep the balls in the frame for longer, which will make it easier to analyse. Which seems to you to be the brighter or the lighter ball? Using the YC waveform monitor again, let's find out. And one of these balls is considerably brighter or whiter than the other, but which one? Let's centralise the balls in the program monitor so they're easier to see. And now let's hide the plastic balls video track so the luminance monitor is only measuring the brightness of the celluloid ball. And wow! We can now see that this time the celluloid ball is not as bright as the plastic one. A reverse of what we found earlier. Could it be because the plastic ball is bigger so there's more surface area to reflect the light back? Could that be the real reason why these balls have been brought in? Bigger ball, better for TV audiences, more money? Well no, not necessarily at least. I've deliberately cheated here. On the footage of the celluloid ball, I've already added a fast colour corrector effect you can see here. And I've altered the white and black output levels to deliberately make the celluloid ball footage darker. Watch what happens to the celluloid ball's brightness levels in the YFC waveform monitor when I switch off this colour corrector effect. Those brightness levels jump straight up. But they aren't more than the plastic ball, they're identical when in reality we've already shown that in this scenario the celluloid ball should be the brighter image. How can that be? Well, it's because camera equipment has a function called auto white balance, where the camera automatically determines how bright an image should be. In the footage I've just shown you, the balls were filmed separately and I left the camcorder on auto white balance. So it's a camcorder which has automatically raised the whiteness or brightness of the image to the maximum safe level. And that maximum level is the same for both images. You can see the line here. So it's a camcorder which has boosted the plastic ball's white level up to the same level as the celluloid ball. And that's why the ceiling you can see here in the YC waveform monitor is the same for both balls. And that takes me back to something that I said right at the start of this video when I mentioned the ITTF using the CIE lab system, a lab system which is device independent. So their results aren't going to be impacted by colour balance and other trickery photography. It's just a pity that they don't include movement in their measurements. Conclusions We already know there's a difference in the texture and construction of the walls of the jeweler's celluloid and plastic balls. And we suspect that there's a difference in thickness too. 
and these differences impact on the ball's ability to absorb light or to reflect it, which in turn will affect these balls' ability or the luminance of these balls. In our tests, 1. Brightness, luminance. Dual celluloid ball is better at reflecting a light source than the plastic ball. And Dual's plastic ball absorbs more light. So which ball seems brighter could depend on your positioning, the light source's positioning and the ball in relation to the light source and you. When the ball's between you and the light source, the chances are that the plastic ball will seem brighter because the light passes through it, lighting up the side furthest away from the light source and closest to you. When the ball's further away from you and its light source is between you and the ball, then the ball will seem darker because the light does not bounce back or reflect back off it like the celluloid ball. 2. Whiteness. Due to celluloid ball, appears to be whiter than the plastic ball. In our tests, the plastic ball's white surface had hints of blue and cyan, hints which weren't there in the celluloid ball. So we still have concerns about the whiteness of these balls compared to the celluloid ones. 3. Impact of camera equipment. If you're watching table tennis videos, the brightness of the ball is probably going to be determined as much by the camera, the quality of it and the lighting as the actual ball itself. And it's also worth remembering one of the temporary specifications in T3 refers to weight. And as you'll see in our video weight, these balls are going to have to become lighter in January 2016. And one of the ways they can do that is to make the ball's walls thinner. But if they do that, then there's a good chance that they're going to exaggerate the differences we've already found in them and they're going to make the luminance values different. And that is the opposite of what the ITTF tell us that they want to do. So the more we test, the more we've come to realise how these specifications interact with each other. And whilst we've been critical of the actual ball manufacturers leading up to this, and now beginning to realise just how difficult it is to spin all the plates at once to give you a plastic ball which plays identical or similar to a celluloid ball. Thank you for watching.